is peace, Islam is ease, Islam is not danger or disease. Welcome to this edition of Beauties of Islam. I'm your host, Yusuf Estes. Today we're going to continue talking about the rights and limits. And that is one of the beauties of Islam. I recall when I first came into Islam that I was <laughs> pretty much impressed with some of the Western teachings and some of the incidences that were taking place at the time. People were talking at that time about the rights of children, children's rights. And I remember thinking that that's an important thing. You know, children have rights and we should, uh, we should find out, you know, what are the uh, rights of children? At the same time, though, I'm discovering Islam, and I'm looking at Islam and asking, well, what about rights in Islam? You claim that Islam is a way of life, Islam is a complete and total uh, package for all times and all places and all people. So is there anything in Islam about rights for children? <laughs> and it's funny, you know what? Islam is all about rights. In fact, that's one of the keys, one of the most beautiful things about Islam is the rights, rights and limits. That we don't go past somebody's rights, because for instance, we give rights to the children. You could say, well, children have all rights, total rights. Now all of a sudden, the children are telling the parents what to do. Uh, that's not a good idea. And it was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that said that this, one of the signs of the last days is going to be that the children will actually be superior to their own parents, treating their parents like slaves. This means they would be going beyond their rights, doesn't it? And that's exactly what we've discovered, you know, that today, by going out here and talking about children's rights and promoting children's rights without putting a check and balance in place, it seems as though there's no way to stop the children today. When my mother, who was a school teacher for many years, came home from school one night and she said, I'm going to stop teaching. We asked her why. She said, the teachers have lost their rights. It's all about the students' rights, but the teachers have no rights anymore. I didn't quite understand what she was saying. It didn't, the gravity of the whole thing didn't catch me until, until I realized that this is exactly the downfall of a society when you give all rights to one group but you infringe on the rights of another group. Now, when I grew up many years ago, the teacher had the right to paddle the child if they got out of line. They had a little, like a ping pong paddle or something like that, and they would paddle you with that if you misbehaved. But then they passed a law and said, no more, no teachers can use this paddle anymore. Well, then what happens? Well, some of the teachers, they would try to swat the child with their hand. Well, they made a law against that as well. They said, no, you can't do that. That's not going to work. So now the, the teacher has no way to say anything over the student. They can't stop them. In fact, it got to the point where the students would challenge the teachers and say bad things in the face of the teacher and say, what are you going to do about it? Well, what could the teacher do? What can they say? Because here you are, you know, you're trying to teach a class and you've got students that will just stand up and say anything, do anything, and what can you do? It got to the point where some of the students were actually striking the teachers. Now that became a serious problem. And of course, then the students began striking each other, hitting one another. And now who can stop them? Because if you put your hand on the child, maybe you grab them too tight, you leave a mark on them or something, they can go to the authorities and you can go to jail. <laughs> you started out in the morning as a teacher, you wind up at night as a jailbird. Because why? Because you don't have any longer the right to discipline the children. Now, according to the Bible, and that was one of the things that I was very impressed with, of course, in those days as a preacher in Christianity, we find the teaching that's very clear, if you spare the rod, you'll spoil the child. And I always derived the meaning out of that, that it meant that you have to use the rod at least to let the child see that you're in authority here, you know. Then the child will behave. Otherwise, they don't see any reason to 
follow the rules because there's not going to be any punishment if I don't, so who will stop me? Spoil the rod, uh, spare the rod, spoil the child. That's what it says. Spare the rod, spoil the child. But when I got to Islam, I said, well, what does that teach? They said, well, in Islam, you're not allowed to pick up a stick and beat children. That's not permissible anyway. So we don't have that. But we do have the thing where we teach the children from early on the proper respect for authority. And this is instilled on the child from the time that they're able to move around, that time they're able to start thinking, they learn what they can do and what they mustn't do. This is pretty normal amongst most homes. You know, you see the mother, she'll say, no, 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 don't do this, don't do that. That's normal, and it's good. Of course, in an Arabic home, they will be saying, la, 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 the same meaning, don't do it. But as they get older, and they begin to talk, speak, think, and converse with their parents, that's when the importance of teaching rights and limits really comes into play. Because it is right for the child to have a time to play with their toys, and it's also right that they should share their toys. But there has to be a limit. And the limit is going to be that the child cannot go and take from the other children without their permission. So we begin to teach them about asking permission. I remember one of the things that my dear friend, Muhammad Abdul Rahman, who was the one who helped me get to Islam, that he taught us this by example. He was very good at giving examples of things so you could see it. One day he went to my daughter, who was about six years old at the time, and he asked her, if she would like to borrow a dollar. I said, borrow a dollar? She said, yes. So she borrowed the dollar from him. She borrowed a dollar. He said, okay, and you're my witness. I was a witness. Okay, you got a witness. You borrowed a dollar. A couple of days later, he asked her, do you have a dollar? She said she had four quarters. He said, okay, can you pay me back the dollar you owe me? She said, okay, and she gave him back the four quarters. After she went on to play, I asked him, what was that all about? He said, didn't you get it? I said, no, I don't think I understand what's going on. He said, okay, I was teaching her that if you borrow something, you must pay it back. But you don't pay it back with anything extra. For instance, if she would have said, thank you for loaning me a dollar, here's the dollar back and maybe a, a piece of candy, he said, I wouldn't take it. That would be wrong in Islam. That goes beyond what's right. The rights of borrowing are that you give back exactly what was borrowed without anything extra with it. Otherwise, it would be called riba or usury. And I thought, whoa, you're teaching a child something. This, I mean, this is too complicated. You're starting out a little kid. He said, no, this is when it's starting. And I thought, Will that really work? Well, I found out about it later. Some years later, it happened at the time of Ramadan, and they have this festival called Eid al-Fitr. And this is the celebration after Ramadan. And one of the things that happens is the children go around and, and smile real big in the parents' faces, and they give them candy, they give them gifts, and they give them money. And my daughter, sure enough, she came running up to me. Daddy, Daddy, look what somebody gave me. It was a $100 bill. And I looked at that $100 bill and I was thinking, wow, we can buy her clothes with this. She can get, uh, you know, some toys with this. Maybe you even buy her, you know, an outfit. We can, so many things I was thinking about could be done with that $100 bill. But she went over to the masjid, the mosque, it's called masjid, to a box that was there for donations and she put the whole hundred dollar bill in that box. I said, what? What'd you just do? She said, I put it in there. I said, why? She said, I always wanted to have a hundred dollars to put it in the masjid box because so many times people talked about things that we need, things that the masjid needs, things the school needs. She said, and I knew I didn't have any money, but I knew if I ever got a hundred dollars, I would put it in there and I just got to do it. Isn't that good? 
And I thought about it. I said, look at this. This child has understood something better than I did. Whereas I was thinking we could get her some clothes, we could get her some toys, candy, gum, things like that with the money. And look at what? She's understanding value, a value that's a higher level of value, not just dollars and cents. So what we're learning from this, this kind of rights, is that there is something with limits, too. You don't just think about what I get for me. You don't just think about, oh, how is this going to benefit my circumstance right now? But you think about how it will benefit others. And by the way, all the time you're doing that, Allah is for sure going to be uh, recording and making sure that you get full reward here and in the Day of Judgment. So this is something really big for us. This kind of rights that we're talking about Really, we could talk about this for a very long time. There's a lot of depth behind it. But what I'd encourage you to do is to study this. Sit with your teachers of Islam and read the Quran and read some of the stories from the books. Like this is Sahih Bukhari. These are some of the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we find a lot of things in there that, that will really help us to understand about rights, rights and limits. And... I'll give you an example of just one of the things that, that impressed me an awful lot about this was the rights and limits is spelled out in one of the chapters of the Quran. Now, in another program, we're talking about this same subject in a bigger detail, but I'll just refer to it for you so that you can look it up. Chapter 49 in the Quran, it's called Surat al-Hujurat. Surat al-Hujurat. And when you go to this chapter 49 in the Quran, you're going to be surprised to discover how it's telling you the proper dealings with men and women both. What a man should do, what a woman should do, what women together should do as groups, what you shouldn't do, how to behave, how is your behavior. And the akhlaq is what they call it. This is akhlaq, the behavior. And all of these things are dealing with the rights and limits, rights and limits of a human being. I think this is a good chance for me to sum it up and tell you that if you go to our website, the website it's called beautiesofislam.com, and you'll find programs like this will be displayed there. And you'll get a chance also to find our other links that will take you to the Quran and the teachings of Muhammad. And when you go and watch for yourself, these little programs, the snippets that we'll have on there for you, I think it'll help you to put all of it in perspective. But the rights and limits that come with Islam are definitely one of the many beauties of Islam. And having said that, I find myself now we're at the end of another program with so much more to go, so we'll ask you to just be with us the next time right here, right here for more beauties of Islam. Until then, salam. Islam is peace, Islam is ease, Islam is not danger or disease, Islam is love and prosperity, Islam is not hatred or adversity, Islam is neither maze nor grace, Islam is giving Allah all praise, Islam is keeping up the pace, Islam is for every race, Islam is peace, Islam is ease, Islam is not danger or disease, Islam is love and prosperity, Islam is not hatred or adversity, Islam is neither maze nor grace, Islam is giving.